Bienvenidos de nuevo. Welcome back to Spanish EdTech's final video in a three-part series regarding Google Forms, formative assessments, automatic grading, data analysis, and the student growth process. This final video will specifically review what to do with the data from formative and summative assessments and how to involve students in the data analysis process and progress monitoring. This is perfect if you're being evaluated with the Danielson model or any model that involves student growth. As you can see, I've already created an assessment using Google Forms, students have taken it, and the assessment has been graded using an automatic grader called Flubaroo. Flubaroo has also sent the assessment results back to the students via email. Every unit, students take vocabulary assessment that asks students to write all of their English vocabulary words in Spanish. This unit has 35 words. Students start by taking a 35 question pre-assessment, as you can see on the screen. They end the unit with the same 35 question post-assessment, and then they take the same 35 question assessment two to three times formatively, depending on the pacing of the unit. Before students take the pre-assessment, you must make a conversion chart to help monitor student progress. Here's my conversion chart for this vocabulary assessment, which will be used throughout the unit. Up at the top, I have included the student learning target, I can discuss what I and others eat slash drink for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Above the target, I included the indicator N equals 35. This reminds us the number of questions on the assessment. Then, on the left column, you can see my four grading categories. I use these on all assessments, rubrics, and for standards-based reporting. I have named my four categories Emerging, Developing, Proficient, and Expanding slash Mastery but you can choose whatever four names you want. During a unit, I will hang this conversion chart up in the classroom, and I've actually made a large one, laminated it, and now I can write on the poster to change the learning target, to change the category ranges, depending on what assessment we're using the conversion chart for. After you have developed your grading categories along the left-hand side, you must determine the number of questions correct that would denote either mastery, proficiency, and so forth down your categories. This is a great discussion to have with your colleagues, departments, and administrators. What number or what range would really denote mastery out of 35 total questions? Same thing with proficiency. What's the difference and where do we draw the line between proficiency and mastery or proficiency and developing? Ultimately, this is for you to decide in your classroom, but you can see where I drew my boundaries for this assessment. After students take the pre-vocabulary assessment, you need to introduce them to the conversion chart and how their grades will be reported for these assessments. It gets much easier after the first time that you do this. After students receive their pre-test feedback and an understanding of the conversion chart, each student needs to receive a progress chart, what they will use to track their progress throughout the unit and what you will use to measure student growth and eventually to create our SMART goals. Here's an example of my progress chart. Notice it's an extended version of the conversion chart that allows students to track assessments multiple times. Notice I have a column for pre-assessment, I have a column for post-assessment, and then in the middle I have three columns for formative assessments. This can change depending on your particular unit, but since I'm practicing vocabulary, we have plenty of time to take formative assessments along the way. So after students receive the feedback on their pre-assessment, students would record their results along with the date in this first column marked pre-assessment. Now is a good time to discuss SMART goals with your students. Ask them where they aim to be by the post-assessment and you can actually give them that date up here. You can then ask them how they will use the formative assessments along the way to progress monitor and see if they are on track to reach their goal by the post-assessment date. Then, throughout the unit, students can track their results from the formative assessments in the middle columns, and eventually, the post-assessment at the end. Clearly, our goal as an instructor should be to get all students to the proficiency and mastery levels with each learning target. So we're left with two questions. What do we do with students that don't reach proficiency? And what do we do with students that reach mastery early? such as at formative assessment number one or formative assessment number two. I'll start with the easy question. For students that prove mastery early, we must challenge them above and beyond. Some things I like to do is provide additional relevant vocabulary to help grow their vocabulary, or I've recently enjoyed the mastery assignment of having these students 
create a rigorous quiz that would measure their peers' level on the same vocabulary. Other above-level activities could be exploratory, learning online activities, working on different verb tenses, or really anything that continues to push these students above and beyond where they're already at. Now for the students that end the unit below proficiency. What about them? So if we're keeping with traditional classroom philosophy, we would give that student a D, tell them that the D is a punishment for not being prepared on time, and then tell them that they better learn that material by the next test because Spanish is cumulative and they will never succeed in Spanish without learning the basics. But we all know this doesn't work. Students don't go back and remaster the material on their own and we're really just letting them off easy. So if we wanna really consequence these students, the best way to do that is force them to learn the material. This is where our standards-based and mastery learning mindsets must take over. In my grade book, I would simply mark these students as incomplete and then sit down and make a study plan with each student. On their study plans, students must answer three things. What, when, and how. What are you going to do to learn the material? When are you going to do it? And when are you going to be ready to retake the post-assessment? And how will you know you're proficient in the material before you take that post-assessment? The first time students complete this study plan, it may require your guidance, but students will get there and understand the process on their own. Then, what happens at the end? Students must take the assessment for full credit. I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, this is going to be so much work, I need another assessment. Remember, you previously had your mastery students make an additional vocabulary assessment. Use them. Modify them. Don't make yourself do double the work. So I know this was a difficult process that I just explained, so please reach out to us with any questions. But right now we're going to get a little bit more complex, or realistic, I prefer to say. I like to introduce the conversion chart, progress chart, and growth mindset philosophy to my students with the vocabulary because it's easier to grasp with this target. However, we're never isolated on one goal. Usually, we have three or four main goals at a time or throughout a unit. So if we have four learning targets, we will also need to have four progress charts. Something that looks like this. Notice each chart up at the top has a different learning target. I can discuss what I and others eat and drink for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I can discuss what I and others like and dislike. I can ask questions using a variety of interrogatives. And I can use regular ER and IR verbs in the present tense. With each additional learning target, notice I've also used a different conversion chart depending on the number of questions for those assessments. We still have the first conversion chart using 35 questions, but notice we have these other two conversion charts that use 10 questions and these other conversion charts that use six. That is okay and that will depend and change depending on what assessments you're giving. I know you may be looking at this and think, oh my, five assessments per target four targets, that's 20 assessments. I can't do that. Remember, sometimes the same assessment is measuring multiple targets. For example, my pre-assessment and post-assessment have a section for each target, and then I have separate formative assessments along the way for each target. So that's nowhere near 20 assessments. I hope that you have found this video helpful. I understand that you will have questions along the way, so don't feel alone. Ask them. The first time you do this, you may be nervous and have that crash and burn feeling. And who knows, you may actually crash and burn. That's okay. It gets infinitely easier after the first run through. It gets easier for you, it gets easier for the students. Eventually, you're going to end up with students that are focused less on raising their grades and more on mastering the content. And they are going to be in charge of their learning and their progress along the way. If you visit SpanishEdTech.com, I've provided links to an example conversion chart and progress chart in Excel format that you can download and adapt for your classroom. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos from Spanish EdTech.